Okay, now our first presentation is um, from Lisa Howlett, who is president of Oburn Leather Company and chair of Leather Industries of America. Okay, we on? Good morning. Uh, my name is Lisa Hallett. I am chairwoman of Leather Industries of America. I'm very pleased to be here and honored to, to ask to speak for a few moments. Um, the slide before said proud to be a, a tanner. I'm proud to be a fifth generation tanner. Um, and very proud to be here today. Uh, which one? Help me. Okay. Leather Industries of America, who we are and what we stand for. We were founded in 1917 as the Tanners Council, changed our name just a few years ago in 1984 to Leather Industries of America. Uh, 1917, I believe that means we're getting ready to celebrate our 100th anniversary very soon. We have two classes of membership. One is our general members, general, general members who are the suppliers. I need to calm down. Nobody out there is going to bite me. It's okay. Take a breath. We have two groups of members, our leather members, of whom we're 24. Um, and we have general members that represent the suppliers. Those are some of our general members, I mean leather members. And newest one to speak of is ISA Tantec, which is our um, tannery that just built in Pittsburgh, Mississippi, the first tannery built in the United States in 65 years. But you can see we have a fairly large gamut of leather members. These are our general members. Again, suppliers, vendors to the leather industry in the United States. Very important partners in our success. What we do, or our mission, we represent the interests of companies that make, import, or sell leather in the United States, and the companies that provide those goods and services to our industry. We have a strong representation in Washington, D.C., with United States Environmental Protection Agency, USDA, Department of Commerce, FTC, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, and U.S. Congress. We are an active participant in trade shows, APLF. We've attended that for the last 30 years. We also are connected with, supportive of, the Leather Research Laboratory in University of Cincinnati. That is the only uh, one of its kind in the United States in that it does defect analysis. Uh, professional staff of six. We do physical and chemical testing, uh, RSL testing. It is an ISO certified laboratory and it participates in uh, sponsored research and the presentation of training seminars as well. This is an example of some of the st statistics that the uh, LIA provides to its members on a monthly and annual basis. This shows our leather exports for the last two or three years. Our wet blue exports. And you can see from both of those that the trends are moving upward. Exports from this year. <laughs> I can't get it to move. Current challenges. Environmental issues will have always been, probably will continue to always be one of our primary challenges and one of LIA's primary focuses. Chromium regulation, we are the voice in, in Washington, D.C., working directly with the Environmental Protection Agency. 
We are the ones who have, for the past many, many years, helped to guide and direct the EPA in the dis distinction between hexavalent chrome and trivalent chrome. We will continue to do this work on valence distinction. We feel like it is of the utmost importance. As I tell many visitors to my tannery, we are a leather producer, but if we don't produce good waste or byproduct, the, the quality of the leather that I produce is really irrelevant. So LIA focuses very heavily on chromium regulation. We are becoming a large exporter of wet blue in addition to the leather we are exporting, so that makes more and more relevance every day. Also work very closely with California Proposition 65 that has to do with the labeling of leather goods. And coming up, we foresee working with the regulation of sodium. Our second current challenge is the competition from synthetic materials. We've seen this in the last two or three years with the increase in high prices. The leather price became um, at a level that many of our producers no longer wanted to use leather. It, would, it was not um, it was on their price point. So you saw leather coming out of the shoe and you saw more and more synthetics going into the shoe. Within that, we need some stability and sustainability of our costs and our supply of raw materials. I personally believe that we also need to work on the quality, some kind of universal quality standards with our hides. There should not be a uh, substantial difference between the grading from one vendor to the other. There needs to be some universal standards and high grading practices. The fourth, the third thing that we see is that there is a marked difference in the definition. Somebody here. Thanks. There's a marked difference in the definition of leather terminology used in the United States. Excuse me just a minute. By the Federal Trade Commission. And we're working very closely with the ITC and, and the Federal Trade Commission in trying to get those same terminology adop adopted so that they are consistent within the United States. And fourth, we believe that this is a major issue in the United States, or a major challenge, is our aging workforce. Um, at least in the United States, we don't have a good system of training the new folks coming up. Um, we have a somewhat broken immigration policy, and it's hard to get technical individuals in, into the United States to work for a long term. And succession planning. Uh, many of us are older and will be looking for retirement in the, in the next 10, 15, 20 years. And we really uh, need to find a way to train young people, to interest young people, not just train young people, but interest young people in the leather industry in the United States and be able to train those individuals. Um, I apologize for my dry mouth. This is, uh, I guess, the first time I've ever had to do this and do this at the same time. Um, I didn't practice doing this. I just practiced doing this a little bit, so I apologize. Um, but as you saw on a couple of the slides back, the leather industry in the United States it has been growing in the past two or three years. Um, I noted when I was looking at this slide, and it was supposed to just be an example, that we had, um, in, in 2012, I believe we had 12 million, let me, I wrote it down here. The, my point is, in 2012, our leather sales, our leather exports, 
Our leather exports in 2012 was 1.2 billion. Our wet blue was 647 million. In 2014, our leather had grown to 1.8 million and our wet blue, 1 billion. So while one increased by $500,000, the other almost doubled. So um, chromium does matter. And it matters more and more every day in the United States because we have become such a substantial producer of wet blue. Uh, regulations in other countries are forbidding or, or, or curtailing their importation of wet salted. And the, the, import, the export of wet blue has become more and more important in the United States. So to continue the battle and watchdog in Washington, D.C. is very important. And I believe to develop a consistent um, system for hide grading is very important. And I strongly believe that we need to develop the young people in the United States so that our maturing industry does not retire along with some of us old folks. So thank you very much for having me today.